That's a good stopping point. <laughs> I'm sure this is something that like um, for both of you playing like laptop and laptop together for a long time is the kind of blurring of source, which is really interesting, which for me in this context, because I'm playing acoustic instruments alongside double laptop, there's very little source blurring. So it's kind of like an interesting um, like dialogue there where like I can clearly hear my sounds and, and where they're coming mm -hmm. from. And then between the two of you, like it kind of fuses. And then like a little bridge from outside, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> get a little kind of confusing as well. But um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting sensation. You know, I don't often play purely acoustically, so that's a, a bit of a departure for me as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but even even when we play with you know, purely acoustic musicians, which we sometimes do, I mean, most of the work we do is 
as a duo together with laptops only because we rarely use other things. However, the sources that we use are very, I don't know, very diverse. Yes. You know, we, we, of course, use a lot of material that has, you know, that originates from field recordings or from manipulations. So studio recordings of manipulated objects uh, or of musical instruments. Um, but we also use a lot of synthesis and uh, I don't know, potpourri yeah. of uh, <laughs> approaches to, to sound design. Yeah, the, the, mm. there's a thing, it's important, okay, for me and for us, but yeah, we use different kind of sounds and different kind of uh, sources of mm -hmm. sounds, of course. And sometimes with, uh, okay, let's say um, instruments or... Um, but the thing is, uh, all the work, it's, it's, it's progressive, you know, because sometimes I have the same attitude live as I have in studio, for example, because mm -hmm. the thing is to understand the sound and to go on with the, 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 the processing and the, the, some uh, different kind of results and so on. Sometimes I, we have surprises. I like to use this kind of uh, tool, of course, and I can program. Okay, I'm not program Miguel do it, but, but I can with, with, with this, um, with this tool, with this instrument. But the thing is to use all, always uh, go on with the work, not uh, not finished, not uh, mm -hmm. finished. Okay, we have structures, but sometimes it's important to 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 feel it that it's really not finished because sometimes I use the same sounds and Miguel use the same sounds, but they sound different because I can uh, change the the mm -hmm. sound. So that's that's important with this kind of instrument. So sometimes I have experienced. Okay, not like you, of course, but in studio to make some uh, recordings of sounds and different kind of sounds, instruments or materials or stones or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And s sometimes it's it's a really concrete sound, but uh, and it and it's okay because mm -hmm. I have the chance to use it different ways uh, uh, every time. So y we, okay, I'm yeah. speaking about <laughs> me, but it's we, we can do yeah. it. Yes. No, and it we want to do it's it. It's a very open-ended, it's a, it tends to be a very open-ended process. Mm. I mean, some of the sounds in my patch have dates and I have things here with dates from 2009. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some were made last week. So, yeah. because you know, some of these structures are, well, some of them are very long, you know, like the sound that's in front of me has like 20 minutes or so. Um, and of course, that what I do when I use this live is to s select parts of the sound to scrub it in real time and then to, to further sculpt it while, while the performance is going on. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some other things are fairly generic, you know, and, and can be used in different contexts. So mm -hmm. they can be used to create harmonics in a, in a given thing, in a given context or to create rhythms or whatever. So I tend to have, and I guess we tend to have a, a fairly large toolbox here that then is narrowed down on particular recording projects. You know, right. This okay. is the live improv. Mm -hmm set yeah, yeah. so to speak yeah. and it's 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 in, it's fun to have to have this uh, all these sounds here to have the chance to have all these sounds here for example i i went to um, the the place to blow um, glass to make mm. belts and i don't know because it's one by one so i don't know what sound i have really in the finish because yeah. of the mm -hmm. the quantity of the, the glass and so on but yeah but it's okay i have the the bells in my studio, so I make the different kinds of, of sounds and different kind of gestures, for example, and we have different kinds. And, and then I have the chance to go on with these uh, materials and all these tools and all these mm -hmm. instruments, they are all together. And of course, that's why I say it's important to me to have a kind of uh, um, consequence in live sets as I have uh, in studio, recording, um, um, uh, editing and so mm. on. It's always, it's, it's, yeah. it's important and it's fun, yeah. But it's also fun, maybe because we are very used to have this blurring of sources mm. when we perform together. 
it's also very interesting when you manage to do that live with other musicians, particularly with instrumentalists. Yeah. And not that it always happens, but sometimes it does. And one of the last performances we did with a guest musician was with Nuno Torres yeah. from Lisbon. Uh, and he's, he's a great sax player, a very unorthodox sax player. And although we had two laptops and a sax on stage, it wasn't really clear who was doing mm. what. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really interesting... I mean, it's interesting from our perspective, but it's also interesting from the audience's perspective. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, usually it's not very clear what either of us is doing, you know. We don't have musical gesture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but in that case, you had an actual instrument on stage and the three of us, w timbrically speaking, we were extremely close to each hmm. other. So that was a, a pretty fun experience. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I've experienced a lot more like like when I've done some of these, let's say with like another drummer percussionist or someone who's doing like instrument plus electronics. Mm -hmm. And then those cases I'll often have stuff where like, particularly as you're exploring sounds, you might have something that is I'm not sure because it'll be a new sound to me as well. So mm -hmm. I'm like, was that me or was that them? And you know, that becomes a lot. Uh, it's an interesting thing to explore because it's yeah. it's surprising as a performer. Mm -hmm. um, it's it can be surprising as an audience because I, I think there's a difference. So like, if I if I make a sound that I've never heard, um, it's novel to me in a way that is not necessarily going to be novel to an audience member because yeah, for them sure. maybe all of the sounds are sounds they've never heard. So like that one sound is no more special than another. Mm -hmm. um, but when yeah, playing with other people, when that kind of material emerges, it's like, was it me? Was it you? Was it you know? Like, and it becomes like a, a like a, a not an inside joke, but like a a kind of a, an intra musician mm -hmm. phenomenon that that like yeah. is doesn't yeah. it maybe translates in the overall energy and that like. I <laughs> but it's when, because of course, of course, here you are there, and so the sound, the direct sound, it's there. Yeah, so sure. I can imagine the sound was made by you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But sometimes <laughs> we, I have the same experience with it in in stage, for example, because I don't know which one was the the guy who made that kind of yeah, sound, yeah. and it's yeah. absolutely uh, fused. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 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 Also because then we have this. I mean, we work live, but we also compose in studio and we do, you know, linear pieces or audiovisual sometimes and we do installations. So we tend, we also tend to share a lot of material, meaning that we have work folders that are shared uh, between the two of us and where we have max patches, logic documents, all the samples, etc., etc., etc. So sometimes, you know, I have stuff in my patch that I don't know if it started with me or with him. <laughs> Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, started by him and then I did something to it. So that means when we are performing live, you know, sometimes there are sounds that he plays that I think I also have in my patch or are <laughs> quite similar to stuff I have, which is really, yeah. it, it's interesting. It, 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 it's, it's a very interesting dynamics that the few times we do, you know, pre-composed linear stuff, I tend to to honestly miss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, I mean, it's interesting to do pre-composed and rehearsed stuff, but no it, problem, it's a very yeah. different. Uh, it's a very different experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so even when we do that, uh, like for instance, this project we have with Gustav now that is, you know, it has a score. It's pretty, pretty yeah. much composed. We <laughs> tend to leave uh, a rather. You know, a lot of space, a lot of room for improvising and for. Things. Yes, I knew you. Yeah. Mm. I'm the one who <laughs> more improvised because yeah, it's 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 important for for me. Uh, yeah, we have that score, that graphical score, of mm -hmm. course, and we have the structure, of course, and and the parts of that structure have the space to improvise and to have a different kind of experience, and mm -hmm. it's always different, of course. Uh, if you listen, the structure is there, so you can understand the composition. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the place of the sound and the distance and the time uh, between that uh, blocks of uh, parts of the composition, it's important to me uh, to have that uh, freedom to uh, to have uh, space to, for improvising and to use. And yeah. even for me, wow. What's got, yeah, what's, what two, happens? Yeah, what was when cool. the two of us perform, we very often do 
you know, free improvisation, we can call it that, mm. because yeah. that's what happens. Uh, we don't necessarily have a set structure that we pre-compose. Well, sometimes we do, but most of the times not. Just go for it. Uh, yeah, but it, a solid 35 yeah, yeah. or 40 minutes mm -hmm. of music without. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, for example, we are mixing now the finished mixing the, the, the record of, uh, uh, with Gustav. With Gustav. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, we listened that. It was a, a, a session, okay, a performance, mm -hmm. and uh, the structure is there. But okay, now then, in that case, we must have decisions that they are going to fixed because mm -hmm. it's 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 a record okay mm -hmm. so you and uh, it's not absolutely different the decision because yeah the, but the 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 fact it's is going to be closed okay this the, that uh, composition so it's a kind of different kind of a proof so yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's okay it's cool yeah cool also if you have the consci music. conscious it's, it's important to, to do yeah. it yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, uh, let's explore some more of that freedom. Mm -hmm. Great. Sure.